Hello Pisces, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Pisces, um, here we are. <laughs> I finally got to you, my sweetnesses. So uh, always save the best for last. You know that, don't tell the others. Um, going to do a reading. What I, I thought I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out, um, ener not energy, I'm gonna pull out Moonology cards, um, puppy, puppy cards. And what I want to do is I want to see what cycle are you in? How are you feeling about that cycle? What is going on with you? Just want to see you. That's all. So, and I've got a tarot deck on standby too. So let's get started, Pisces. It should go without saying, but it still needs to be said. This reading may not resonate with everyone. If it does, that's awesome. I'm glad we connected. If it doesn't, that's okay. Maybe next time. So, Pisces. What is the cycle that Pisces is in right now? Step out of your comfort zone. Oh, it's interesting. North Node. So North Node always sounds like, wow, that's awesome. My spirit is progressing. And yes, it is. But it usually is. It's like, well, this doesn't, this always feels unfamiliar. It feels like I'm not sure uh, what I'm stepping into. I'm not sure how to navigate this, what the results could be. Like, there's always a sense of trepidation. I kind of feel like um, a time, a time for healing. Surrender to the divine is the underlying. So... Well, that's kind of interesting, right? Because Pisces is very spiritual energy um, and of yourselves. So I want to say this is an energy, like the underline is kind of a past energy, something that you would typically be very comfortable in. Um, I can heal. I can connect with the universe here. I'm surrendering to what the divine is showing me, um, preparing me for next steps forward. So maybe you are, right, at this next step forward. How are you feeling about that? Or what is surrounding that in the situation? The doggies aren't all about feelings, but most. <laughs> they don't lie about how they feel. So I'm just sitting here quiet because I have all these visions playing through my head at different times when I've come home and what Lily does. My lie. She usually is so excited to see me and runs right to the kitchen like, I need a treat. I guarded the house. I'm like, you're not that excited to see me. You just want a treat. Oh, you're happy. You're excited. You're eager. You're like, let's let's do this shit. Let's do it. All right. You're eager. Your eagerness to step out of your comfort zone. Wow. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, you're going for laziness. So content and lazy. Bow. You bow. Bow wow. You really... um. <laughs> wow, it just came out. Maybe I'm like literally channeling like a dog. I took spirit here in your reading. Oh, wow, that's great for you, Pisces. Um, so yeah, because to heal and surrender to the divine is finding contentment with like, I'm not going to do anything today and I'm just going to feel comfortable in that. I'm going to feel really good doing that. Oh, I tell you, I want to try to hit this pretty hard <laughs> after I move. I have all my plans set up. I'm going to sit in front of that fireplace with a good book. And I'm just going to sit there, <laughs> sit there and watch the fire burn, have a nap. Oh, that's exactly what this is. So I see you've been doing that and I would like to do that. <laughs> I'm going to take on your, your past energy in a little while. That's what I want to do here, Pisces. That looks so nice. But now you're like, all right, you're getting out of, uh, I think it's even like too, like a, an energy that you've maybe gotten comfortable in. That's the other way I would describe this, like stepping out of your comfort zone. I think you're coming out of an energy that you've gotten kind of really used to and comfortable in. And you're eager to see, you know, what's next? Where where can we go next? What's 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 up? I don't know. We're just going to explore this energy that you're in right now. If you know me, I do get distracted with the puppies. I just can't. Oh, my God. It's so cute. I just want to surrender to them. I've done it before. I have my friend, my Leo friend. She has like, well, she's got three dogs. And then sometimes she dog sits for a friend who has two dogs. So you go over to her house and there's five dogs. And they're all like my little dog Lily size. And you walk in and it's just like, so I was just like, and they're barking and excited. And I find as soon as you become submissive, the dogs stop reacting, right? And they just calm down. So I'll just like lay flat out on the ground and there's puppies on me. And I think, this is heaven. This is what heaven must be like, right? Okay. Oh 
Step out of your comfort zone. Eagerness. out with this one i don't know who this is for but it's just like i just started hearing right really loud in my head glory glory hallelujah <laughs> you know me i'm not typically religious no, i'm really not actually but um very spiritual <laughs> so yeah but the funny thing is actually like these, these two sit beside each other it's just like glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Look at this. The sun with the nine of cups. Whoa, you're you are excited. You wouldn't who wouldn't be? Yeah. This is like a glory, glory, hallelujah. That's exactly what it feels like. I don't know. But what you eager. <laughs> this energy is interesting. So Oh, wow. Heart chakra activation. Yeah. Boy, this is interesting. So, okay. You know, it's funny, like, you got the contentment and laziness. This is a little bit like that. This is the first two cards that lead into stepping out of your comfort zone. This is the energy that I feel like it's kind of like showing me you've been comfortable in here. Like... I have to be careful the way I've put the cards out because it's easy for me to go, okay, this is all flowing into one story, but it's not, right? Because we have the cycle and then you have your feelings around it. So um, this to me is like being, she's just looking very complacent, um, focused on, you know, yeah, maybe healing things, but it feels like any type of healing that you've been doing here is more like, I don't know, just balancing and managing day to day. Uh, maybe there's some physical healing that's been going on. And then you get this glory, glory, glory hallelujah. Like, literally. <laughs> oh. And so, the <laughs> seven of cups with judgment. I didn't really hear it until I pulled the six of wands re beside judgment. And then it was like, and that's with the king of wands. And it's like feeling empowered. It is. It's a very, what is the, all the lyrics to that song? Because then... Or that hymn, or what, I guess it's a hymn. Um, H Y M. So sun and nine of cups. This is fulfillment of a dream. This is your glory, glory, hallelujah days ahead of you. Yeah, I mean it's funny that that came into my head because it really is powerful in those. Now, how are you feeling? Well, I'm going to show you how it ends, okay? Because there's a little trip to get there, so don't get too concerned when you see the other cards. It ends with the Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups underneath. So that's like heart chakra open activation. Big time. Big time. You're loving it. No, you're eager. You're loving it. You're... Yeah, it's awesome. So, okay, Emperor and the Chariot. We go there. And then we go to the Devil. He's been coming around a lot lately. He's been pooping his head in, popping his head in. Um, Maybe pooping his head. I don't know. But popping his head in. Uh, yeah, and then you get the six, see, then you get the six of swords and the five of pentacles. So this is like, oh my God, everything's better. I really like this energy. I mean, this is a great cycle that you're in. This is a great cycle, right? And I already showed you that then it go into the queen of cups and the knight of cups. So, okay, I feel like there's some sort of situation here that may have had control over you. Or you're feeling like you've gained some sort of physical control. You've gained some sort of physical upper hand against the darker forces in your life. Um, and you're, you're moving away from lack in like almost all senses of it. 
I'm not. This is reminding me a bit of the Sagittarius reading I did a few weeks ago. I was like, well, I don't know where to go with this because it's like, I don't feel like there's anything that I need to resolve in this reading for you. Uh, but, you know, I could look deeper, I guess. Oh, the Ten of Wands. Oh, the Hierophant, the Ten of Wands. Oh, that was a heavy ass. It's, that's like a heavy burden there. Some sort of responsibility that you've been tied up in here and maybe just surrendering to the divine about it surrendering surrender this to the universe and then i feel like the universe is delivered here for you for something um yeah okay so that's great you guys have been getting some pretty pretty good readings this year and we've had some struggling ones it felt like since, uh, yeah, this is the time of, well, not the time of creation. <laughs> my channel. The, um, the beginning of my channel. I, I remember Pisces and Leo seem to struggle with, you know, energies could be difficult. But boy, you really, um, yeah. Okay, there you go. You're stepping out of your comfort zone. And it feels so good. Because I want to say it feels like you're coming out of a cycle that, well, you would like to leave behind. The Nine of Cups, the Tower, and the Death card. I feel like there's a dream that you've had here that's being reborn. There's a dream that you've had that's coming to life here. It's coming up out of the ashes. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> what are the lyrics to that? Glory, glory, hallelujah. All right, I don't know that I've ever looked up. Oh, oh, now, yeah, it's coming into my head. Yeah. I think it is quite religious. That's funny. Oh, it's so slow. Oh, look at that, since I laid my burdens down. Oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, this is gonna be interesting to read. Oh, I don't know if this is the right one. Representative text. I don't know that this is the one. Is it? Or maybe I just don't know all the lyrics. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Two friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Three, I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my burdens down. Four, I feel better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. So, all right then, right? Um, well, I, you know, I got to tell you what comes in. It's not, it's not my reading. I mean, I'm not a religious person, but I kind of get it. I get the lyrics. It's all good. Um, so, okay. Queen of Pentacles, two Pentacles. Maybe juggling your home life. The Queen of Swords. Well, I didn't know what these burdens were. So maybe it was. He was like a partner. <laughs> no, because it's just like going from the Queen of Pentacles to the Queen of Swords. I laid my burdens down. I cut that ass. Chopped his head off. Where's that deck? There's one of my decks with a queen of swords. She's full on cut his head off. <laughs> Holding it there. Okay. Seven of Cups. Judgment. So I don't know. Maybe you were debating cutting something or someone out of your life here. This burden is done. It's finished. Seven of Cups of Judgment. Coming out of coming out of the confusion, coming out of the unknown, the illusions, the mysteries, right, rising above with a mind full of clarity with the King of Swords. King of Wands and Six of Wands. Oh yeah, so now you're taking on a new energy to manifest fire, fire. Accolades of fire and yes so this is the new plan this is your new plan now you laid your burdens down i feel like you've, you've left some folks behind here you've um and by doing that you've cleared up any mysteries in your life 
You look at things very clearly. You may even be looking at someone, the way these two are on either side, you may be even be looking at someone now. There could be a, new, a relationship that is now more of a legal relationship. Um, and now, and then you got the sun and the nine of cups, right? Which is, is this nine of cups, like dramatically being reborn. This dream, this wish. The sun, the nine of cups. Ooh, the two of cups and the page of pentacles. Well, that's interesting. What do you... I mean, some of you could be focusing on your children. Some of you could be focusing, it could be learning. This could be like even stepping into new relationship dynamics. You know, eager. You're feeling eager. Well, who wouldn't? Like, this energy is really nice. Eagerness. King of Pentacles and Justice. It's like to make something right. To make something right or to take some sort of legal action could be. Could be to take some sort of legal action. You're eager to take some sort of legal action or to make something right here. The Emperor and the Chariot. The Emperor and the Chariot. The Queen of Cups. Oh, well, that's where you're going. Well, there you go. Okay. And, okay, the Devil has got the Ace of Pentacles. What is that all about? Devil and the Ace of Pentacles. I will say, it's... <laughs> yeah, you can look at it like that. Because it's like, it could be like, like you know, contracts and stuff that you're legally bound to. It kind of... What is this energy? kind of reminds me of, like, I can't even compare that to, like, I got my new house, right? The bank owns most of it. But we own it together. <laughs> it's kind of like the devil. I think the bank, I'm going to be honest, after dealing with landlords for so many years, um, out of the two devils, I would rather deal with the bank because it's all written down. <laughs> well, they can't evict me if I'm paying my mortgage. Okay. The emperor and the king of wands. The devil is the emperor. This is... Uh, what is this? What are you doing with this devil energy? This is, uh, are you switching? You're, you're like switching how leadership is utilized. Maybe. This emperor has got like love. This is the love emperor with the queen of cups. And then the king of wands, right, is over here as part of the cycle. And this is, you're manifesting with this energy. Or the plan is, the plan is to, to, to do something with this, this really, this is a dynamic, dynamic, mm, creative leader, right? When it's in a good energy, and it looks like, like, to a, a, an extent here, because you might be flipping a script. I feel like you're flipping a script, and you're bringing some sort of justice in, or you're eager to do that. What the hell is bothering my face? <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, the painting's so long. I am finished my painting. Oh my God. Well, not forever. Just the stuff I needed to do before I moved into the house. I'm so happy, but my fingers are swollen and my eyes are tired. So, okay. The Six of Swords and the Five of Pentacles. Well, you're moving away from it. I feel like this devil is... Okay, I feel like it's using... It's a, kind of a controlling energy. Is it like you moving away from one? Or, or claiming... It could be moving away from an unhealthy type of controlling energy. And then sort of like, again, like flipping the script. I am moving from the devil. And then we're going into the Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups. Damn, the Six of Wands, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Lovers. Well, I don't know, Pisces. It looks really good. I don't know if it's a cat hair in my eye. It's really bothering me. Um, but there's, okay, but this King of Wands is the key here. 
So this person is fired up. This is you fired up. Why wouldn't you be? You're eager. You're eager to flip the script. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Your dream is reborn. That's an African-American song too. So kudos to that. And well, kudos. That song was born out of suffering. Oh, a time for healing, right? There you go. A time for healing. Six of Pentacles. I would say if I was ever going to go to a church, I want to go down to like a church in Louisiana or, um, yeah, something like that. Like you got to, I got to experience that at least once in my life. It's an African-American church. I don't know what you all call it down there. Tell me, what do you call it? Like that real, like, it's like they just sing like their soul just <laughs> Have you ever been to like a white folk church? It's like, oh, turn to page or something. Okay, surrender to the divine. Well, the fool. A time for healing. So am I wrong? With the six of pentacles, there's some sort of physical, um, it could be some sort of money balance that needs to come into play. I mean, it could be, it's interesting with the queen of pentacles and the two of pentacles. Could be could be some sort of money balance that was actually needing to be healed here. I don't know. And then surrender to the divine with the fool. That's like, I'm, I'll start my journey, but it's up to you, divine. You show me how this journey's going to go. Contentment, laziness. Where you been? Content with inaction? Well, we've got the nine of wands, though. How content is that? Laziness. <laughs> Dogs don't lie, though. The sun. Wow. But the sun is this dream that you're... is being reborn. So, yeah. Oh, I can't pull out anything. The Ten of Cups at the bottom. The Four of Cups and the Ten of Cups. Wow. Well, you were just flipping the script, aren't you? You're just flipping the script. So there you go. Oh, what are we going to do with extended? Mm, I mean, I could look into the future energies. Oh, why not? Let's do that. <laughs> look into the future energies. This is so good. Why wreck a good thing? Right? <laughs> all right. So I'm all done. <laughs> I feel funny. I feel really happy, though, because I finished all that painting. Do you want to know what I did? Okay, you can go to the extended if you want. You can do both and listen to me. So I'm all doing your reading. I tell you all the things I had to do, and then I did it. My poor fingers, I swear to God, they're swollen and stuff. I think they are. They are, but they'll, they'll come back. Um, so I wanted to get certain things done in the house that I got before we move in because it was just, you know, like certain rooms, once you get furniture in there, it's like, oh, this is going to be tedious. It's going to be hard to paint this and that and so anyway, so that was my my goal here. So I got my my son's oh, freaking thing in my eye. My son's room fully painted, ceiling, walls, closets. Oh my god, the closets were bad. The one closet in his room. I'm sitting there saying this, I feel like is anybody even here for this story? <laughs> Anyways, um, the one closet in his room. The house was built in 1968. And I'm telling you, I think the closet, it had two coats of paint and I could see what the original was. It was this super soft strawberry pink, <laughs> super, super soft strawberry pink. And then over that someone, I don't know, maybe 10 years later. So 40 years ago, somebody put something that looked like a very light, dirty, goldy beige. That didn't age well well what would in 40 years oh it was just a horrible ugly like it looked like a dungeon i was like i have to paint these closets they're so gross so i did they're so fresh right now and he had three his room was so hard because he had three closets and he has this alcove so there was and a window and a door to go into the rooms so with so much trim like so much i didn't do the trim yet because i can you know, around the frames. And now I can do that once we move in. That's not hard. Because there isn't furniture in front of that stuff. So, um, the, the, oh, God, doing the, like, the, you know, the tramp, <laughs> the border, the edging, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, doing that, it was forest green. 
And he went with a, a very light, soft beige he wanted for his room. I thought, well, that's interesting. So, and I dismantled one of the closets and turned it into uh, a computer alcove. So I wanted to get all that done. I painted his ceiling. It was horrible. I don't think most of the ceilings in that house have been painted in probably 20 or 30 years, maybe more. So, you know, they look bad. And um, so I did that from ceiling down. Didn't have to do baseboards and didn't have to worry about trim at the bottom because all that flooring in the bedrooms in the upper hallway is being replaced and new baseboards going in. So that was the other thing to want to get it done, right? Get all that painting done before the new floor goes in. So I got his room done. And then, oh, the front room of the house, because it was horrible. It was so horrible and dark. Anyways, I think I showed you pictures of that. That was the whole ceiling. And then there's like, I don't know what you call it. It's not a tray ceiling. It's a trim. It's a trim or something that goes around it. And I'm getting tired just talking about it all. <laughs> so I did, I did that. And that is like floor to ceiling to floor, that room. That front room is done. Um, even the baseboards, because that floor is not getting replaced. Mm. And then, what did I do? What did I do? Where did I go after that? Well, it seems like I spent, I spent a couple weeks in his bedroom. <laughs> so, okay, oh, so I was telling y'all, I was going to paint the ceiling in the family room where the fireplace is. And that kind of sunroom that's like going to be my office where I'm going to do the readings and the videos. Because it's pop, it was popcorn ceiling in there. I mean, I don't really have anything against popcorn ceiling. Um, I mean, if I had the choice not to have it, I would choose not to have it. But anyways, but it was really gray. And it had a wood. It was, and so I was going to paint it, which was going to be a lot of work. Because it's ceiling for one thing and it's popcorn ceiling for another. And I thought to myself, I'm going to go to all this effort and work. And I bet you this ceiling is going to start to gray again in five years, six years, whatever. Because of the wood burning stove, fireplace in the room. I thought it's kind of stupid to have popcorn ceiling here. So I hadn't planned on it, but I did. I got a contractor to come in and remove all that popcorn ceiling. Oh, my God. And I'm telling you, what a freaking difference that room was a bit of a black hole it seemed kind of dark in there i think that ceiling was sucking all the light i cannot tell you how much brighter that room is it's incredible and the ceiling is just impeccable it's beautiful <laughs> i'm so glad i did it but it was two days i couldn't do anything at the house there was dust they'd even they tarped off they blocked it all off the rooms they were doing was still dust getting everywhere. Oh my God. And I already cleaned that. So anyways, <laughs> I spent, I spent eight hours after like Saturday. They finished Thursday and Friday. They did it. Um, I'm glad I got someone to do it too. I was even looking online at different ways to remove popcorn ceiling. And I was like, it's not really that hard, especially if it's never been painted and it wasn't. But then what's underneath there, right? And I just thought, I don't need to add this to my life. <laughs> I didn't. I bit the bullet and I paid someone to do it. Um, the ceiling was a mess under there. You could see like there's pot lights in there and they had them put in, I guess at some point and then did a shitty job. So probably went with the popcorn ceiling. <laughs> so there was even at one point there was a light fixture that would have been in the ceiling and you could see that was gone and there was a hole and then they... um. <sighs> They put duct tape over the hole and plaster. <laughs> so I was glad, right? Because I had professionals go in the ceiling looks like, and there was a big crack that went down the full length of the ceiling too, just from the house shifting over the years. So they fixed that all up. I was like, I'm glad because if I had removed that popcorn ceiling, where am I going with this? <laughs> I've done this before with Pisces. You guys have become like, I haven't done that in a while though. I would just sometimes I would sit and be like, you're like my psychiatric chair. I'm just going to sit here for a little bit, Pisces. <laughs> Tell you my woes. So I'm telling you my woes. Um, so yeah, that's beautiful and bright and gorgeous. And so what I'm going to do at the fireplace, have you seen, if you've seen pictures from the video when I showed you the house, 
it's I've got a special cleaner for it to take the creosote and the, the smoke stain off of it. Um, I'm going to lime wash the fireplace. I don't want to paint it because I don't want to lose the texture and I don't want it to be opaque. I want it to have a bit of an old world feel, but look fresh. And I researched it, so I'm gonna lime, I'm gonna clean the fireplace, and I'm gonna lime wash it. And um, I think the lime wash is the best way to go because it's not, it's also not a permanent fixture. You know, you can actually power wash, lime wash off the brick, and it allows the brick of the stone, and it allows it to continue to breathe. Whereas paint would seal it up, and you're done. That's finished. You know. So I'm gonna lime wash it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lime wash. <laughs> anyway, um. That room's gonna look good. So, oh yeah, so then they did that. I spent eight hours Saturday vacuuming the walls and the floors and polishing the walls and the floors. And I had I have two air purifiers with HEPA filters in them. I set them up in the house and now it's nice. So, you know, I went back yesterday. It was two days after they'd done everything and they told me, you're probably gonna see dust falling for a long time. I had, there's no new dust. I think the filters, the air filters and how much like vacuum, you mean everything and washing it? Yeah, eliminated a lot of it. So anyway, so yesterday <laughs> was my last day painting. I went there. All I want, oh, so I've been working on my son's other room, which is going to be like his, it's kind of, I guess it's like his, what would you call it? His computer lab. I don't know what you call it. But yeah, his com actual computer desk that he plays games on and does shit with is going to be in his room. But he, he likes to 3D print and he buys like these old Dell computers and he refurbishes them and turns them into servers and does things with them. So I guess it's kind of like his, I don't know, his room to do those things in. So anyways, he wanted a two-tone two room. So the upper part of the walls is the same kind of beige that he picked for his bedrooms. And then the lower part, it's almost a black. <laughs> it's almost a black. And he went in, he, I showed him and he did it with both a plumb line and he went with a, anyways, he plumbed out, he measured it, the walls and got it all level. And then I did the painting and taped it. And so yesterday I had to go and do the lower part of all the dark color. And I want to do the ceiling in my bedroom because it was bad. And I thought, I'm going to lay in my bed and I'm going <laughs> to like it. And I want it. Before I get all my furniture and I wanted to paint that ceiling. So I thought, I'm just going to go there tomorrow. It's all I got left to do. I'm going to paint the ceiling in my bedroom and do the lower paint trim in his other room. And then we're good to move in, right? Then I feel like, then it's painting hallways and kitchen and even the dining room. Like, all the furniture is in the middle of the room. So it's not hard to paint, right? So I was really trying to make my life easier down the road. And I killed myself doing it, but I did it. So anyway, so I start painting the ceiling in my bedroom and I didn't they got like ceiling paint across the one wall and I thought, oh, it's okay I'm gonna paint these walls eventually anyways and I smoothed them out because you don't want a big drip there right and I looked at well now this wall looks really shitty <laughs> but then I thought to, it made me think I thought this is the wall that my bed's going on and I have a king-size bed and I thought oh do you want to try to paint around your bed and try to move your bed and all that shit? I said, no, you don't. You should paint this wall, Cindy. And I hadn't picked out a color, but I thought I have lots of paint from when I did the front room. And I like that color and it would go with with my my room scheme. It's very simple. It's white and blue. So it would go. So I thought, okay, I'm going to paint this wall. I have to paint this wall. So I painted the ceiling in my bedroom, two coats. I painted that wall in my bedroom, two coats. And then I did his dark lower wall, two coats <laughs> yesterday. And um, now I'm done. Oh, and then I painted the ceiling in my closet and the ceiling in the front hall closet because I was working with ceiling paint. I'm like, do it, do it. So I did it because all the closets look like they haven't been painted in 40 years. And I'm done. I'm freaking done painting. I'm not going to paint anything till the new year. Oh, I might lime wash the fireplace. But I don't know. I'm just looking forward now to, um, well, the hardwood floors are going in next Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is said is how long it's gonna take them. So now I'm just moving stuff into the house, which I've already been doing. Maybe I'll put up Christmas lights. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I've all done that shit. So yeah, <laughs> my 
Sorry. That's my my psyche actor. I think it was you and Libra that I used. Maybe it was more Libra. I don't know now. Anyways, I told you my woes. That's where I am in my story. Your energy looks great. Your energy looks great, Pisces. So yeah, I'm going to go do the extended. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time, be gentle with yourselves. Bye.